Hello guys, um, <clears throat> we meet again, this is um, instrumentation, uh, SKMM3242, SCMM3242. Now we are looking at uh, lecture 3 uh, on the performance um, characteristic for measurement as an instrumentation system. Let me open the slide for you. Okay, here we go. This is lecture three on performance characteristics for the system of measurement and instrumentation. All right. Um, when you work with system, any system of instrumentation, basically we want to, you know, to see, we want to be able to describe how the system um, system performs, basically. Um, whether it is it is in a good condition or not in a very good condition but how do we describe it all right so here uh, it's state for, for for any system of instrumentation you can classify the system performance into three different um, characteristics the first one is operational the second one is static and the third one is dynamic okay so so in this case, um, we are looking at the features or the, the character of system of instrumentation in three different uh, situations. Okay, the first one is operational. Operational characteristics is, is, is basically the character of this uh, instrumentation system. Um, as, 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 as it is, meaning that uh, the system the instrumentation component is not yet um, basically connected or installed to any system. Uh, as simple as you can figure this thing um, when you want when you want to buy um, any system of instrumentation online, for example, um, the sensors, the actuators. Okay, you have some idea. You have some design uh, objective. You are looking at certain sensors, for example the temperature sensor okay so what you will do is basically you go online you look for the online catalog or you look for the online data sheet of that that particular sensor okay so the the characteristic that you are looking at uh, in the online catalog or uh, in the online data sheet is basically operational characteristics okay meaning that the you, you you have not yet received the, the instrumentation system. You have not yet received the sensor. You just look it. You just look at the information on the internet, for example. So, so this is the character that you, that, that 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 you are looking at without actually uh, physically having the sensor in your hand or without physically install the sensor. To a working system so meaning that this is like uh, an offline um, characteristics okay so this information basically you will get uh, from any system of instrument uh, system of instrumentation from any sensor basically not just limited to um, not just limited to uh, temperature sensor it, 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 it works with any kind of sensor and actuator okay so the typical operational characteristic that we are looking at when we want to choose or want to buy uh, any system of instrumentation is the range, span, sensitivity, resolution, and dead band or threshold. Okay. So before you buy any sensor, before you purchase any sensor, or when you have a design problem or you want to design something, you will be looking at the sensor. Okay, and at that stage. Uh, you are looking at these one, two, three, four, five uh, characteristics, 
and this one can be observed online or in the data sheet without having to buy we have without having uh, to have this 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 system physically in your hand or without having the system to be installed in certain uh, equipment or, or certain system okay so the, this 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 characteristic this operational characteristics is characteristic of sensors or actuators while they are you know unplugged from the system okay so this is basically the definition of the characteristic for example here you have range so the range basically will give the minimum and the maximum uh, operating range uh, range of the system then you have to span the difference between the maximum and minimum if you look if you look at example uh, a, a specification of the monitor is read as uh, which as follow so you have range uh, from negative 0 0.5 to uh, positive 40.5 okay so range is basically you have to spell out uh, the minimum and the maximum for example in this case you have to spell this is uh, ranging from negative 0 0.5 to the maximum of 40.5 degrees celsius all right and but for the span you have to um, get the maximum span which is the maximum you have to minus the minimum so you have you have on one value for the range you have two value minimum and maximum in the statement but for the span only one value you have to minus the maximum to the minimum okay in this case is 40.5 minus 0 0.5 so you will have around 41 degrees celsius okay next is uh, we have sensitivity Sensitivity is basically a ratio of change in the output to the change uh, in the input, which causes a steady state condition. For example, here a galvanometer has a sensitivity of 17 millimeter per micro ampere, meaning that for every one micro ampere input, okay, you have you have a seven mm changes in the output. So, this is this is uh, basically um, con consistent for all ranges of input. Okay, if you give 10, if you give 20, so you can basically predict what's the, what's the output, how, how, how many millimeters of um, light spot moving uh, across the, the, the screen scale, for example, in this case. All right, so for any given one micro amp change, you will have the output change of 17 millimeters. So this is sensitivity, basically, meaning that your, your, your equipment is sensitive to one micro ampere input, which gives out uh, 17 milli millimeter changes. All right. So this is sensitivity so now we are looking at the resolution so resolution is the least incremental value input uh, or output that can be um, detected okay um, if you look at uh, the previous one we have sensitivity of 17 over 1 micro m so the resolution in this case is 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 either 1 micro m in the input or 17 mm in the output all right and the next one is uh dead band or threshold basically defined as the largest value of a major variable to which instrument does not respond meaning that if you have uh, i'm taking the previous example of uh, 17 millimeter per micro m okay so the dead band in this case is one uh, micro m because this is the largest value uh, that the equipment does not respond if you if you uh, basically makes the output uh, the the input only 0 0.5 uh, micro m so the equipment is still giving you 17 mm if you uh, you know increase the input to 0 0.6 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 still the equipment is is giving you 17 millimeter basically but if you give uh, if you increase the input up to 1 uh, micro m or 1.1 micro m then you will start to see the 17 millimeter output will change to 34 millimeter output for example so uh, the dead band is, is basically the range of values in which you know if you if you uh, induce any change in the input the output is not changing all right in this case is one uh, micro m so in order to get the equipment you know showing the changes in the output you have to give the input bigger than one micro m all right 
this is this is the bad, that bad. If you give any lower, the equipment will not respond. Okay. Um, so basically, we are done on the operational characteristic. You can find this this information from any online catalog or online data sheet. So you use this information uh, to choose or to buy uh, the sensor from. Okay. So next, we are looking at the static characteristic. Okay. Static characteristic is basically uh, now you have the sensor you. You use operational characteristic uh, to choose from the online catalog. You uh, make the order, you receive the sensor. Now you plug in the sensor into your system. Okay, you have the temperature sensor now. You plug it into your small system prototype and you should be now observing the static characteristic. Okay. After this, we'll, we will be looking at the dynamic characteristic. For this dynamic characteristic, it's basically the character of system of instrumentation. When you start, receive changes from the environment, changes here and there. So it's more on like a dynamic uh, behavior of the system once you plug in the sensor. Okay. As for now, uh, we are discussing on the static characteristic, uh, which refer to the state of uh, uh, instrumentation system where nothing is, 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 is changed around the system meaning that you buy the sensor you plug in you power on and you observe it all right so once you basically uh, plug in the system you you power on you'll observe this one two three four five six seven seven uh, character of, of the system the first one is the error of course, you know, the errors, the difference between the true value and the instrumentation reading. Of course, the sensor say from the operational characteristic, when you plug in the sensor, you give in 5 volt. The system would give you like 5 volt um, reading. But um, due to the nature of engineering, you might be getting a little bit uh, lower than that. For example, this particular system, when you give in, when you plug in the sensor uh, in around the environment of for example, 26 degrees Celsius, you will be, you should be observing four volts. For example, that's stated that, that that statement is stated in the operational characteristic in the data sheet. But when you buy the sensor, you plug it in, you're not receiving four uh, volt. You're receiving 3.98, for example. So those are basically the the error we are talking about. Of course, uh, there are different type of error. You have bias error or systematic error, consistent and repeatable. This kind of thing needs needs uh, this time of this kind of equipment needs calibration basically, and you have the random error. So um, basically, um, this is this this is due to the lack of repeatability in the output measurement uh, system. Okay, this system uh, is, is 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 defined as unstable. Okay, and what you will do normally is 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 basically. You get the average, and 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 you can see that the the error is not consistent. Okay, then you have um, accuracy. <clears throat> so it is defined as the ability of the system to respond to a true value. Uh, okay. Also, you have one, two, three, four. You have four. Four type of. Um, type of um, accuracy this is how you describe the accuracy of course uh, it is defined by the ability of the system to respond to a true value okay uh, so you have uh, four ways of describing system accuracy the first one is measured a uh, variable plus minus the error limit so in this case uh, if the accuracy is plus one and 0 0.2 the actual reading is um, 
39.9 and 30.3 if you have the current reading is uh, 30.1 so when you have this when you, when we have the situation basically you are you, you have to spell out the true reading in two terms because you have a plus minus uh, value there so the, the actual value that you are, you are you are reading from your instrument you have to add in you have to consider the, the error of plus minus two degrees celsius all right so how how you state the error you can state by the same unit of what you're reading for example here you are reading at a degree celsius unit and the accuracy term is is um, stated in the same unit of degree celsius so what you need to do is you can you can take the actual value and you can plus that uh, accuracy that that that, that uh, accuracy statement number and then you can minus so you have two values as a reading right so the second way of doing this is from the percentage of uh, full scale normally they state that um, the full scale is having a certain amount of error in this case you have full scale of 10 amps and the accuracy of plus minus one percent fs fs here is in full scale so the accuracy is basically you can get one percent from 10 amps basically 0 0.0 one m plus minus all right before you can do some calculations to to get the final uh, uh, amount of uh, the final reading you have to convert the percent to the same unit of ampere then you can do a calculation so the third uh, way of mentioning uh, system other uh, instrumentation um, Accuracy is by stating the percentage of the instrument span. For example, here, if the accuracy or is is plus minus three uh, percent, then the span of pressure uh, measurement is twenty to fifty psi. The accuracy is plus minus uh, zero point uh, zero three. So, the span you have to take the measurement of fifty minus twenty, and then you have to take plus minus three percent, uh, which is um, plus minus 0 0.9 uh, psi so you can meaning that you have in whatever reading that you get from 20 to 50 you have to consider this this plus uh, plus minus 0 0.9 uh, error in your in your system okay so the last one uh, the last uh, way of describing uh, equipment accuracy is a percentage of the actual reading for example, if the true value of the voltmeter is 2 volt and the voltmeter accuracy is plus minus 2 percent, the actual voltage lies between 2.04 and 2.6. The accuracy in this instance is, of course, you have to convert from plus minus 2 percent to the voltage unit, okay, given the actual reading. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four ways or method to describe. Uh, Instrumentation, uh, instrumentation system accuracy. Okay, we have several examples. In this case, you can you can uh, take a look uh, yourself. All right, I'm not going to cover this one. Is is basically example of how you uh, characterize system accuracy uh, using these four methods that we have discussed. Okay, we still have this. So the next one I'm going to talk about is basically system accuracy. Previously, we were talking about character of uh, any single system, any single unit of uh, instrumentation system. For example, you look at the sensor itself, or you look at the signal condition of blocks, or even you, if you look at some other uh, components in the system of instrumentation. These are single system, so you can describe the can des describe the character you can describe the error you can describe the accuracy using that one system but no uh, using using that one uh, method but now we have multiple components connected together we have more than one um, component we have more than one sensor we have sensor connected to the signal conditioner block so for example in this case we have two blocks you have uh, C the input you have K with with their own with its own uh, accuracy statement plus minus delta K. Then the system is connected to another system G with plus minus delta G, and finally you have the output of V with plus minus delta V. So 
basically we know how to describe error of a single single block uh, previously we have seen four ways but now we have two blocks connected and how do we calculate the, the whole system um, accuracy okay so here in this case the output can be described you know you have to look at this uh, formula you have to see at the end of the term you have to multiply by the g and its own error and you have to multiply by the next system k with their own error and if you expand the whole formulation you will have this long term and what you need to do is um, of course knowing that v is, 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 is basically uh, k times g times c and you have the term error over there uh, delta v Okay, so in terms of fractional uncertainties, um, error per output, so you can you can rearrange the formula to, to, to take delta V over V, then you can take the term up there, you know, and you can solve the you can you can simplify the equation and finally you will have delta V over V equal to plus minus delta K over K plus plus minus delta G over G. So that is basically the whole um, error term uh, for, for a system of instrumentation so if you look at the percentage you have to multiply the things by a hundred percent all right so yeah the same thing a v delta v the the final um, the final error term you have to multiply by 100 percent to get the system accuracy Okay, for that, there are examples here which you can basically look into. Okay, and we, we go back to the um, static characteristics. So now we are looking at the precision. Precision is basically the degree of exactness uh, of which an instrument is designed to or intended to perform. Um, we can basically look at this map here. Yeah, you have precise, accurate. See, you have seen this thing from from you from from your previous level of study. This is the different difference between uh, position and accuracy. For the A one, it is precise, but it's not accurate because uh, all the reading is not falling into the smaller circle. You have B. You have, you have good precision and accuracy. Uh, for the C and D, uh, you know you can you can you, you can see that. All right. Then you have repeatability, uh, the ability of the system to display the same reading every time you take the reading, basically. So if, for example, if this sensor, you take the, you take the reading from, the, from a heating element of 100 degrees Celsius. So they have to give the same amount of uh, output reading every time you take it, no matter what and when, as long as the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. For example, if you take the reading today is your system is giving out the output of four volts for example all right if you take like tomorrow tomorrow night morning all that you should be able to get the same five volt if if the system gives different reading so the system we can we can say is is is, is having a low repeatability um, function all right so then the next one is um of course, we don't want the system that gives different uh, reading every time we, we, we take it. We want the system to give us the same reading given the same condition and situation. All right. So next is uh, linearity. Um, oh, they have some, some, some graph over here. So basically, um, personally, I prefer equipments that work uh, works in linear uh, character because uh, it's, it's, it's much more simplified and easier to predict the equipment uh, performance. All right, if you have the straight line, then basically you can extrapolate and you can predict what will happen further and further and further if you increase the input compared to the uh, equipments which have. Um, uh, non straight line or non linear uh, character you know some of them may be having exponential maybe you know different different kind of uh, response <clears throat> okay as I mentioned here you see when linear relationship occurs straight line equation can be used for example 
c equal to mc plus c naught, cm equal to mc plus c naught. It's, it's like y is equal to mx plus c is the same thing. All right, so equipment who works in the uh, linearity state is preferred to equipment that works in a, in a non linearity behavior. Okay, so you can take a look at this example yourself. All right, and then then you have hysteresis. Hysteresis maybe you know um, when you start the equipment they are in different state. Uh, over the time, the equipment is in a different state. So when you take reading in this in this two state, you are you are you are getting a little bit uh, different. Okay. Um, okay, the same equipment they behave differently in the different situation. Different in the in a sense that very small variation, which basically having a good repeatability. Meaning that when you take the value during the uh, the boot up the startup. They give different value, but when you take the reading between the shutdown period, they will not repeat the same sequence as 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 as, as put up. This is uh, you know called caused by mechanical friction, flexure, uh, capacitance, or maybe due to heat of the equipment. For example, if you take the transformer, when 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 it is cold, they will give you different uh, reading. When it is hot, they will give you different reading. Okay, for example, here error resulting from hysteresis. A is way up, B is way down. Good equipment should give you only a straight line of uh, for both B and A. But equipment with hysteresis problem, you go up in a different path, you go back in a different path. So this is not not very good. Okay, and the last one. Character of uh, characteristic of a static uh, instrumentation system. Uh, you have the calibration, of course. You know the calibration is the process of checking the measurement system. Again, the standard reading and uh, typically equipment need calibration because of uh, many issues. All right. Of course, this is to ensure that the equipment uh, always give the right um, what they call that value every time to the measurement. Um, this calibration issue, you you have this issue mostly from analog sensors. You won't be having this kind of issue with digital sensors. That's why I mentioned um, I mentioned um, in the previous lecture. We have a lot of analog sensors previously, but recently we have more and more digital sensors because of this issue. Analog sensors, they, they give the reading just just uh, right out straight away from the from the input they are sensing and from the conditions of, of the sensors because as you know the sensors are made of uh, materials and materials uh, properties changes over time and in a long period you may have drift in the reading so you have to recalibrate the thing so that you compensate the error of uh, material deform uh, or material property change, all right. But uh, different in in contrast to the digital system. Of course, the sensor is still using uh, material which can change its property over time. But for a digital system, normally you have you have some 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 kind of correction system in the sensors installed uh, because you need to convert from analog to Digital, so the process basically include calibration as one of the pro procedure to get the reading, right? So I think uh, that's all for lecture three. Okay, I'll see you again in the lecture, next lecture. Goodbye.